Now I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio so that we can create our own server-side event handler. I'd like to handle the code check-in event and make sure that all developers include comments on their check-ins. Sure, there is a check-in policy for this, but one, I have to enable that check-in policy, two, the policy should be deployed to all users, and three, I have to rely on users not overriding the policy and checking in anyways. So I will start by creating a C-sharp class library project. You can use any .NET language, so not necessarily C-sharp. I'll name the project Plural Site Server Site Event Handler. Now I'm going to delete the default class that gets generated when I create a project. Next, I'm going to add TFS references that I will need to be able to interact with the TFS system. Note that these are server assemblies as opposed to the client assemblies that we added in previous modules. Now I need to add a new class to my project. I will call it Code Check-in Event Handler. As I mentioned earlier, I need to implement the iSubscriber interface. And now I will import the required namespace and implement the interface. Let's start with the name property, which will be used by the TFS logger. Next, let's take a look at priority. You can use low, below normal, normal, above normal, or high. This is used by TFS to decide which event handler will fire off first. Let's go with normal. Now I'm going to specify which events my handler should subscribe to. This is very important to be able to handle the right events, of course. In my case, I'm looking for check-in notifications. And I need to import the namespace into my code. The event handler logic is placed in the process event method. This method has the following parameters. The request context this event was published in, whether this is a decision point or a notification, the object that was published as part of this event, the code that should be returned to the user when a decision point fails. This is very useful when an event is triggered by a command line tool. The message that should be returned to the user when a decision point fails and a collection of properties associated with an exception. The method returns an event notification status. This is an enum with the possible values of action denied, action approved, or action permitted. I will start by initializing some of my arguments. Then this is where my logic will be implemented. First, I'm checking to see if I'm at a decision point, rather than just at a notification. I can reject actions at decision points. Once I get to a notification, I can no longer reject an action. I'm also checking to make sure I'm handling a check-in notification. Casting the event arcs to a check-in notification allows me to get access to different properties of my check-in. In my case, I'm verifying that comments have been provided, and if they're not, I'm going to deny the check-in action. If I run into any problems, I'm going to log the error and deny the action. Otherwise, I'm going to allow the action to complete. Once that is complete, the deployment is pretty easy. I'm going to build my assembly and then copy it from my bin directory to the plugins folder under the TFS web services. and my server-side event handler is now deployed. Looking at the event log, I can see that my TFS web services were issued a restart command. Now back in Visual Studio, 
I can try to check in some changes without entering a comment. And my event handler caught this and sent me back this message. If I want to debug my event handler, I can attach to the IIS working process for my TFS application pool and set breakpoints to follow my code logic. Let's try that. I'll now try to check in again. And as you can see from my IDE, the debugger hit my breakpoint and I can now step through my code. Since my check-in had no comment, the check-in action will be denied. Now let me add a check-in comment and check-in. So now let's step through the code again. And as expected, the comment was found and my event will exit with action permitted and the check-in will proceed. My event handler gets called a second time but this time with a different notification type. If I hover over notification type, you can see that is of type notification instead of decision point. This is where you could put in some code to create new actions once you know that the check-in has been completed. Back to Team Explorer, and my change set was successfully checked in.